This is my 1989 Toyota pickup. And if you've been following along, you guys would know that we have taken the cab off this recently, cut off the least sprung solid axle swap, and have been in the process of doing a three-link suspension instead. And that was up until about six weeks ago, until I broke my thumb. Brought to you in part by Cranbrook Toyota. We are about to take off to pick up one of the final big pieces for my 1989 Toyota pickup puzzle. And I'm excited because I've wanted one of these forever. Unfortunately, they do not ship to Canada, so I need to head down to Ethan at Grindhard Plumbing Company because I got it shipped to his shop. Can you guess what we're picking up? I'll give you a hint. It's one of the main characters from Futurama. So, knowing I was coming into the States, which is the land of cheap fuel, <laughs> I made the decision not to fill up before we left. Uh, we were uh, just under a quarter tank, and we have now crossed the border, like just now, and the fuel light's on, and we're on empty. So, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we make it to the first fuel station, which I think is maybe 20, 30 miles away? <laughs> she had doubts. Yeah. <laughs> I, hate, I hate not having enough gas. It scares me. She gets really bad, uh, like, fuel or range anxiety, but we made it. It took 20 gallons. I don't know how big the gas tank is on this thing, but it had to have been real close to empty. What's going on, crazy dog? Huh? Hey. No. <laughs> this is uh, Sam's favorite part of coming to Ethan's house. Yeah. Well, we made it. When you said you were having a tubing bender shipped here and UPS showed up, to, or FedEx showed up today, I was like, is that it? <laughs> He's like, yep. I was like, I hope that's everything. <laughs> it should like, it's tiny. That is tiny. Yeah. Oh, look at that little thing. Yeah. We got a uh, bender, finally. It's about time. <laughs> it is about time. I was saying earlier that this is something I've been wanting for like years in the shop. Just to be able to make bumpers or sliders or roll cages. anything. Or yeah. <laughs> roll cages. Or and custom choppers and Barbie Jeeps. Yeah, or that. Or that, yeah. <laughs> but that thing is incredibly simple. And it doesn't need to be mounted to the floor like a lot that's, of vendors yeah, do. Yeah, and it takes up no, no space. space. Yeah, that, that's, that's the biggest selling feature. That's why smaller I than like a one. case of beer. <laughs> Mint. Super cool. Yeah, we're in the middle of getting all sorts of shiny new toys too, as you notice when that's, you walked in. Yeah, that's nice. The instructions said, stand up the posts with a forklift. And I said, how about three people? <laughs> <laughs> After picking up the bender from Ethan's, he invited me out for some snow biking. So I returned a week later. Well, if anyone was wondering if you could fit snow bikes in the back of a Tacoma uh, short bed, I mean, yeah, they fit. But unfortunately, this day did not go as planned. A couple hours in, I crashed the bike and immediately realized that I broke my thumb. So I came back to Canada, got some x-rays done, and it turned out that I needed surgery to get pins installed in my thumb to hold the bones in place. And now, that brings us to today. The three link is essentially done. The axle is underneath it, but it is being held up by these pieces of steel welded from the axle to the frame. So the first order of business is to support the frame, get something underneath the truck so that I can then remove these supports that I have 
uh, temporarily tacked in. And then we can get some cardboard, start making some templates, and get to action. I'm choosing to start on the driver's side because, well, its frame plate has the most going on. It needs to tie in the shock tower, but it also needs to tie in the panhard bar. Now my thumb isn't like healed by any means. Uh, I just recently got the pins removed from it, so I feel like I've got a bit more freedom. Um, like this is like to the extent that I can move it. So um, I'm still quite limited, but I am not gonna let that stop me anymore. So let's peel the tire off and then shut up all the room in the world to, uh, well, start working on the frame plates. So I got one of these on either side that was kind of supporting the whole weight of the truck, but it's just tacked in. So before we can make the frame plate, I got to cut those tacks, remove this piece, and then I've also got to cut what is remaining of the old shock tower off the frame here. And beside that is this brake line mount here that will also have to get cut off. So there is a little bit more work to do before we are ready to start mocking up some sort of frame plate. Okay, so let's work on the cardboard copy of this frame rail. I feel like holding that up and tracing it is the best plan of attack. From the inside, that'll work. So now we have our frame plate design. I marked out where the coilover towers are gonna approximately be. Same with the pan hard bar. I don't think I'm gonna make them like slot into this tower, just because it'd be a lot easier to kind of figure out their final position in the truck when everything's finally coming together. But then this way I know where approximately I could put holes in the frame plate so that I can weld it all in nice and snug and hopefully miss the locations where the towers or pan hard bar is gonna be. So time for the fun part. Let's go to the computer and draw this up. All right, I got the arc droid all set up, our new piece of steel here, and the file loaded in. Hopefully I've got all the settings set up correctly because this is a pretty big piece and I don't want to waste it. So it's been over six weeks since I ran the arc droid, so uh, fingers crossed that I got her all, well, set up properly. Check it out. Take this guy, line her up on there, and she's a thing of beauty. Let's go throw this on the pickup and see how she fits. See if I can do this with one hand. Line that guy up down there. Oh yeah, couldn't have asked for better. I had to call it quits after getting the frame plate installed yesterday because my thumb was starting to feel a little bit rough. But we're back and it is time to play with some more cardboard. I've got the coilover mocked up kind of in its place here and it looks like I'm going to have to do some bodywork. This inner fender here is gonna have to get cut out to make room 
for the coilover tower. I've got the coilover kind of mocked up here. There is four inches left on the shaft for up travel. I've just got a ratchet strap holding it uh, tight with the coils actually removed from it just for mock-up purposes. So the only thing I could see being an issue with the shock tower here is the actual steering arm, which I don't think will be an issue because it's gonna come like kinda up and out. So I guess we'll just hold the cardboard up like that. I do want to knock this over top of the frame. We know it's not gonna come any further out and like cut in the body right there. And it's not gonna go further down in the bottom of the frame. But with those two marked, I don't like how thin it is down here. So I think we're gonna come kinda out with it and then up. So that sits like that. But now I also need to figure out how to put a back plate on it. So actually, how about we do this? We trace this. So I can see where the that body line is here and I can do a straight edge from here across from here. It's starting to look like the side of a shock tower because I could plate here, plate here, plate here. And then, of course, there's going to be some eyelets in the center. And it works on both sides. There's going to be have to, going to have to be an eyelet up here somewhere to put a bolt through. And we got a shock tower. Okay, that makes sense in your brain. Makes sense in mine. It appears as though 90% through this cut, my plasma cutter decided, uh, nope. It's not really a big deal because if I lay my cardboard piece right over top, of course, it is a perfect matchup. So, I just take my marker, mark out the remaining area that needs to be cut, and get my grinder, finish off this cut, and we are back in business. So I just set up the art droid to cut up the next side, the other side of that tower, and realized the reason it stopped cutting like 90% 90, 90 of the way through is because I actually kicked the breaker that is running on the plasma cutter. So I'm gonna dial the plasma cutter down a little bit and hopefully, hopefully it stays on <laughs> through the duration of this cut. So I've gone ahead and tacked up both sides of the coilover tower here. And just for kicks, I kind of rested the coilover in its home uh, just to see how it's looking. I think I'm gonna make some changes. I think the, 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 the shape of the towers are fine, but I've got it pretty narrow here. And ultimately, there's going to be, um, well, coil springs, on the coilovers and it's gonna be really tight in here, which really isn't a big issue. These were kind of just placed in here uh, with my best guesstimation. All I need to do is break the tack welds off this, cut out the bodywork a little bit more and just boop, bump it over and that should be good to go. Check that out! We officially have a coilover tower installed in the pickup. Man, it feels so good to make actual progress on this thing again. Uh, the last like couple of months here have been a bummer with the broken thumb, but this, this feels good. <laughs> so 
now all that's left to do is to kind of tack the tower into place and then make the axle side mounts and then well on to the other side And there's a coilover all mounted up on the top and bottom. And uh, look at that droop. Oh yeah. <laughs> There we have it. The uh, truck is actually sitting on its suspension. Um, there's still no panhard bar, as you can tell. I can kind of walk the uh, frame back and forth here on the suspension. Hopefully, the DOM for that shows up tomorrow so I can actually get that in place. But heck, that's so rad. It looks like an absolute monster right now. Um, it's super high in the front and there's a reason for that so it still needs the engine the transmission the dual transfer cases the hood the front bumper the front winch it needs everything all of this weight still on the front to make the nose go um, dip down to where it's supposed to be this is set up for four inches of up travel so hopefully with all the weight in there we end up right where we need to be